Stayallday.com. You're now tuned into the show where you learn the discipline to show up day after day to do the work, the confidence, put yourself out there boldly and authentically in the mental toughness to continue showing up, doing the work, putting yourself out there, even when the success you're expecting to achieve has yet to be achieved. And on top of all this, you get a huge dose of personal initiative. What is that? That is the go-getter energy that moves any one of us, including yourself, to go and make things happen instead of waiting for things to happen. And then we put all this together into a series of frameworks, approaches, insights, strategies, and techniques all underneath the umbrella of one unifying philosophy that is called Work On Your Game. My name is Dre Baldwin, also known as Dre All Day, and welcome to the show. And today's topic is we are continuing our ongoing series of How Winners Think. Before we get started, I remind you of two things. First of all, my daily motivation, Monday motivation messages guaranteed to have you focused, sharp and on point to start your day or your week, respectively. All you got to do to get those to be a member of my texting community, it is free to join. My number is 305-384-6894. Send a text to that number, and once we reactivate those messages, you'll be getting them straight to your phone. Secondly, work on your game university. This is the place where all of my coaching takes place. If you would like to have me as your direct coach, there is one way for it to happen by going to workonyourgameuniversity.com where you can schedule a time to talk to us and we can find out uh, what your situation is, what you feel like might be in your way, where you want to go. If we believe we can help, we'll tell you how it works and where we go from there. Again, that's workonyourgameuniversity.com. That out the way, let's pick up right where we left off, which again is our ongoing series of how winners think. We're picking up on point number 13. Number 13. I take initiative and do not wait for things to happen to or for me. I take initiative and do not wait for things to happen to or for me. The internet winners always visualize their success. They take initiative on anything that looks like it could help them on the path to continued success. In other words, winners do not wait for opportunities to present themselves or for things to present themselves as something that could possibly help them. Winners go and actively look for these things, and then they seize upon any opportunities that they see, or at least what they think might be an opportunity. They go and create them. They become them, and any opportunity in front of them, again, they take it. They just go after it. Winners are on the hunt for continual success. Just like when we talked about how to be a predator, we just did an entire series on how to be a wolf. We did an entire series on that that just ended a couple days ago. This is the mindset of the winner, is that they are always on the prowl for anything that they could possibly use that will make them more successful or will continue ongoing success in their lives. So winners go and create opportunities, become opportunities, and take opportunities. They are on the hunt. This is what makes them winners. It's not that they, again, randomly have things occur to them or that circumstances just tend to break in their favor. Many people will look at winners and assume that's what's happening. Oh, the situation just breaks in this person's favor all the time. That's the way it looks, but that's not what's actually happening. People who don't win consistently, on the other hand, tend to be more, more on the receiving end of opportunity. They wait for opportunities to find them, and sometimes it happens, sometimes it doesn't. The problem is when it doesn't, the person who's not winning doesn't know what to do. They just sit around and wait until something else happens, if it happens. And what that leads to is inconsistency, because your expectations are that things are going to come around, but you have no idea when they're going to come around. That leads to an inconsistent action and leads to inconsistent outcomes. All right. Do you see the difference between these two? People who win are actively looking for ways to go and create more wins, whereas people who don't win are passively waiting for opportunities to create more wins. And when you're actively looking for something, guess what happens? You usually find it. Whatever you're looking for, you find. You look hard enough for anything, folks, you will find it, even if it means you have to make it, even if it means you have to create it. All right. There's a line in. Uh, there's an artist, rapper by the name of Drake. Many of you are familiar with Drake, not Dre, but Drake. And one of the things he says in one of his songs years ago, he said, if they don't have a story, they'll make one. And this is exactly what I mean. All right? And actually, it applies actually pretty well to reporters and journalists these days, especially, that if they don't have a story, they'll make a story. Why? Because a reporter or a journalist's full-time job is telling stories. They got to tell you the story of what's going on. And if there's nothing going on that is noteworthy, well, they have to create a story because something has to be going on because if nothing's going on, they can't do their jobs. If they're not doing their jobs, they don't get paid and everybody got bills. So if, you want, if they don't have a story, they will make one. If a winner does not have an opportunity, they will create an opportunity. Even if they got to make it out of, out of nothing, they got to make it out of thin air and create it out of scratch, they will do it. So the question is not if this is true. The question is, are you doing it? Moving on to point number 14. Today's topic, once again, is how winners think. Number 14. I seek and heed constructive feedback on my performance from trusted sources. 
there's very several key words in this sentence. First of all, seek, you go look for constructive feedback. Heed, meaning when someone gives you constructive feedback, you actually listen to it and apply it. From trusted sources, meaning just because someone has some feedback does not mean you need to accept it or listen to it because that source may not be trusted, but you do have trusted sources who do have your ear and can give you feedback. Winners want feedback. Winners want constructive feedback on what they're doing. And the more a winner is winning, the more important that constructive feedback is because true winners want to always get better and they're always looking for a challenge. Now, someone who's not really winning, there's plenty of constructive feedback you can give them because they're not winning. They got probably got plenty of areas for improvement. But winners, they tend to have fewer and fewer things they can improve, relatively speaking, because they're winning so often. But they're still looking for ways that they can get better. And when they cease to be challenged to get better, they stop trying. And they basically want to get out the game. I have no challenges. I don't want to play anymore. Again, we mentioned Michael Jordan many times here in this series and many episodes in this mini series. Uh, when Michael Jordan decided he didn't have any more challenges in 1993, he retired. Then he, in 1998, he seemed that he still had the fire to keep going. But since the team was going to be pulled apart, he didn't want to be part of a rebuilding process. So he didn't do it. The point is, winners understand that they are not perfect and they can always strive to get better. They're always looking for ways to get better. So this is why they keep trusted sources around who have the license to offer them constructive feedback on their performance on their execution and just help them with how to get better and how to maintain a high standard. Winners want to get better. They want to maintain a high standard. They want to be pushed because if they don't get pushed and they start coasting, they become complacent and winners, uh, that's anathema to winners. They just don't want to be that type of person. They don't want to coast. They don't want to take their foot off the gas. They don't want to relax. They want to keep pushing themselves and they want to maintain a high standard and to maintain a high standard, you need a reason to do so. Nobody maintains a high standard just because it's cool to maintain a high standard. They, there has to be a reason. And winners get people around them that help supply those reasons. Uh, Phil Jackson tells a story. He was Michael Jordan's basketball coach. And he tells a story that when Michael Jordan first was going to retire in 1993, after winning three straight NBA championships and was properly sealed in space as the best basketball player ever, still is to this day, Phil Jackson said, Michael came to him and said, well, look, I'm going to retire unless, coach, you can help me find a challenge that will keep me going. And Phil said he tried. He tried to throw some things out there at Michael that could be challenges to keep going. And none of them were strong enough. None of them stuck. And that's the reason Michael Jordan retired. And then he you know, came back a year and a half later. And the rest is history. You can go watch the documentary or Google it if you want to know what the rest, what the rest was. But anybody who performs at a high level consistently has people around them who offer them feedback so they can maintain that high standard. By the way, episode number 1217, I talked about Michael Jordan as a virtual mentor. So if you want to hear me uh, lay out why I, I mentioned him, I've mentioned him often here on the show. We'll listen to episode 1217. But there are no exceptions to high standards and receiving constructive feedback for high level performance. Doesn't mean they got to listen to everybody because when you're a high level performer, you are very visible, which means everyone may have something they want to tell you, but you don't have to listen to everyone because there are too many people with something to say. But if you instead, if you instead have the mindset of I am willing to be pushed, then uh, you can take feedback from, again, the right type of people, not everybody. Number 15, today's topic, once again, is the mindset of a winner, how winners think. Number 15, if my team is not successful, then I am not successful. This is the mindset of the winner. If my team is not successful, then I am not successful. This one is a really important one that in my experience as an athlete, I've talked about this uh, many times myself, that I dealt with uh, many athletes who did not have this mentality. I dealt with many athletes who had a mentality of, as long as I'm getting mine, I'm good. And I hated dealing with these kind of players. I'm not a coach, but if I was a coach these days and I found I had a player like this on my team, I'd get rid of them immediately. I want the kind of players whose main focus is the success of the team regardless of how much they get personally. When I say they get, meaning stats, opportunities, touches, uh, shot attempts, media endorsement deals, uh, followers on social media, the goal is for the team to be successful. And when everyone on the team is on the same page and you have some actual ability within the people on your team, that team has the potential to be great. That team has the potential to be successful. But you have a very talented team, but if not everyone's on the same page and everyone has their own separate agenda, which is about themselves more than it's about the team. The team will not succeed, even if you have a ton of talent. Some of you who have played sports, or maybe you, 
even other things. It doesn't even have to be sports. You can apply this to any team, any aspect where there's a group of people working together. Many of you have probably been in situations where you had a very talented group of people, but that group was not as successful as the elements of the group said that it should have been on paper, i.e. that sports team didn't do as well as it thought it appeared they would, or that group didn't do as well as it appeared this group would, even though you had all this talent, quote unquote, on paper, simply because you had too many separate agendas, too many conflicting agendas. Not everybody was on the same page of we are here to do one thing. And this happens in teams all the time. In the sport that I play, basketball, this is a common thing. You get players who are more focused on their personal accolades than they are on the team being successful. And the more talented the player is who has a personal agenda, the less likely the team will be successful. Now, if you got a bum on the team who has a personal agenda, it doesn't matter because the bum doesn't really play and doesn't have influence. But if you got a superstar who has a personal agenda, then the team's going to be thrown off because the superstar has influence because of their abilities. So the better the player is, the more of a challenge they will be. Napoleon Hill talked about this in one of his lectures that Napoleon Hill, by the way, the author of Think and Grow Rich. And he talks about this in the lectures that he did after uh, after his book blew up. He went around and he did a whole lot of sales trainings and I guess what you call motivational speaking these days. And one of the things that he talked about is that he always looks for people who are uh, loyal and of high character to work in organizations. And anytime you have a man in an organization, this is back in the day when mostly men did most of the work. You have a man who is not loyal or of low character. You can't have him around because he will infect the entire organization. And the more talented he is, the more he infects everybody because he has more influence because of his ability. Now, again, a person with low ability, but who is also of low, char low of character, can't hurt the organization as much. They will hurt, but not as much because they have no influence. Nobody's listening to them because they're not good. But someone who's really good can really destroy your whole organization from the inside out just by force of character, by force of personality, rather, because of their low character. As natural leaders, winner, winners understand that they are responsible for everything and everyone around them that they touch. Winners are responsible for everything that they touch. That's what makes them winners. So any team that a winner is a part of, that team has to win in order for the winner to feel like a winner. Which means, even if it means by force of personality, by hook or crook, the winner is going to do what's necessary to make sure that any team that they're on wins, even if that means getting rid of some people. If some people got to go, they got to go. So as I've, I mentioned Michael Jordan here, I'll mention him again. When the Chicago Bulls were in their early years and Michael with Michael in the league, he was obviously establishing himself as a great player. But not every player who was on the team when the Bulls were losing in the playoffs was on the team when the Bulls were winning championships. Some of those players had to go. There were some players that had to be cleared out for the winning players to come in. And Michael talked about that in that Last Dance documentary, that there are some guys here who have only been around since we've been having sellout arenas and everybody's showing up to our games like we're some kind of rock stars, but they don't know what it was like when the arena was half empty. And they got to understand that there's some work that has to be put in here. He talked about that. And that's the mindset of a leader, that we're going to pull everybody up. And everybody here has to understand that the point of us winning and the reason that we're stars now is because we've been winning and we're winning because of the work that we do. And it starts with the work. And he said that to he would say that to his teammates. Winners understand that they cannot just be winners by themselves if the team is not successful because you are on the team. So if you're on the team and the team is unsuccessful, that means you're not successful because you're part of it. You can't separate yourself from the group in which you are a part. Right? That's not possible. To a winner, if the team is losing, they're losing. Now, to someone who's not a winner, the team could be losing, but if they have great stats, they're like, well, look at my stats. I'm not the reason we all see. Those kind of players you don't want on your team. Those are the kind of players that I hated playing with. I never liked players who were like that, and I knew too many of them. See, a basketball player who's averaging 30 points, 15 rebounds, and 12 assists on a failing team, you're not a winner. Your team didn't even make the playoffs, but you averaged 30, 15, and 12. Well, what's your problem? If you are so good, why is the team not winning? Oh, it's because of the teammates? Well, who's the leader? It can't be you. If you're blaming anyone other than yourself, then you're not a leader. If a true winner is on a team, that team will be successful just by the connection of having the winner on the team. And it doesn't mean they're going to be successful on day one, but they will become successful as long as you keep that winner around because the winner is going to push all the losers out of the organization so they don't even want to be on the team anymore. And the ones who have the potential to be winners, they will get pulled up by the presence and the energy and the, the, the power of personality of the winner. They will pull the best elements out of everybody else who sticks around. And what, those who can't, Get those best elements pulled out and then will be kicked out of their organization. They will see them, they will quit. If they won't even have to get kicked out, they'll quit. And again, if that team's not winning now, they'll be on their way when you get winners around. This is why you gotta have the right people in every organization because they keep everybody else in check. 
those of you who are in charge of organizations, let's say you're a boss or a supervisor or a coach of a sports team, you can't be the strongest personality in the locker room for the team because there has to be some people on the team, actual players or members or whatever they're called in your organization that hold everybody else accountable. There's only so much they can listen to you and you're not always around, but they're always around each other. All right. So somebody has to be able to hold everybody else on the team accountable to doing what they're supposed to do. And if nobody's doing that, then the team can only be they can only go so far. You can only do so much as the head person, especially when everyone knows you're the head person. There has to be a member of the rank and file who can get everybody in line. Who is that in your organization? If you don't have one, you better get one. Your team can't win without it. If that team is not winning now, they'll be on their way when you get the right person there, when you get the right people in place. You don't have the right people in place. You got a whole lot of talent. You ain't going to win. That's how it works. So winners take ownership of everything. All right. Part of the package deal of power, ladies and gentlemen, is responsibility. Winners take responsibility for everything that they touch. That's the reason why they have power. It's not the other way around. They have power because they take responsibility. So when you see people who are not taking responsibility, but they want power, this is the reason why they're not getting the power, because they they're trying to take half of the package and not take the whole thing. You got to take the whole thing. You can't separate the package. And if you are a winner, you yourself listen to this, you take responsibility for every team you're a part of. That's your work team. That's your family team. If you play a sport, your sports team, uh, whatever communities you're a part of, you take ownership for all of it being successful, not just the parts that you want to pick and choose. Winners don't have winners and leaders do not have the luxury of picking and choosing. They get all of it, like it or not. With that said, folks, let's recap uh, this next part of our ongoing series, How Winners Think. Number 13, I take initiative and do not wait for things to happen to or for me. Winners are predators. They are Caesars. They go after things that they want. And when they see it, they take it immediately. No hesitation, no thought process, no committee, no vote. Number 14, I seek and heed constructive feedback on my performance from trusted sources. Winners get trusted people around them who have their ear and will give them constructive feedback to keep them sharp, to keep them on point, to keep them on top of their games. Number 15, if my team is not successful, I'm not successful. Winners take ownership of everything they touch and everything that, that is in their orbit, including the success of the people on their team, even when the people on their team are not nearly as talented, as good, as dedicated, or even as uh, committed as the winner is. But as long as you're on the team, I'm committed to making sure we win. And since you're part of the team, you're going to win because you're on my team, even if you ain't that good. That's the mindset of a winner, that they're pulling everyone up with them. They are not hoping that everybody comes up to, to them. And I'll give you enough examples of this already in this series. So with that said, folks, tomorrow we will be on the, I believe it is the finale of this series. Yes, the finale of this series will be tomorrow's episode, How Winners Think. And make sure you go to workonyourgameuniversity.com so you can start putting, first of all, get these thoughts installed into your mind. Secondly, get the Bulletproof Mindset Framework. Third, get me as your direct coach so we can start taking these thoughts and move them into actions, actions and outcomes for your personal and your professional development with me as your direct coach, whether you're an entrepreneur, professional, or someone just trying to figure it out, go to workonyourgameuniversity.com. Work on your game. Dre, 